Hi, welcome back to Autonomous Mobile Robots. My name is Paul Fergale, and I'll be your teacher for this segment. Now we're going to start to flush out some of the mathematics associated with wheeled platforms. And in this segment, we'll look at a specific but fundamental problem. What is the relationship between the velocity of a robot platform and the constraints imposed by a single wheel? Now, let's start by formulating the problem more specifically. So the problem we'd like to address in this segment is for a robot using several wheels, find the relationship between the speed of an individual wheel and the platform velocity. And we're going to make some modeling assumptions. So first, we'll assume that the robot moves on a flat horizontal plane. Uh, we'll also assume that the wheels are kind of ideal wheels. So they have a single point of contact with the ground. They're not deformable at all. The motion of the wheel is pure rolling with no slipping, uh, skidding, or sliding. We assume there's no friction for rotation about the contact point, and that the wheels or that the robot is actually rigid, so there's no deformation of the robot chassis. These are really common uh, assumptions that we'll make in a modeling step. Now, what I'd like to do is try to derive a really general wheel equation with, uh, you know, without specifics so that when you're faced with a particular individual wheel, you have the tools you need to, to, to do that modeling step. So the first thing we'll do is define a number of coordinate frames. So the first is the um, inertial frame. So that's here, and that's a sort of uh, not uh, non-moving frame that we uh, um, track the robot's motion with respect to. Next, we have uh, the robot coordinate frame. It's uh, rigidly attached to the robot. We have the steering coordinate frame. Now, the steering of the wheel is uh, around the z-axis of this coordinate frame. And finally, we have a frame uh, rigidly attached to the wheel. And so if you make these definitions, then the position of the wheel with respect to the inertial frame is just the sum of these vectors. So from the inertial frame to the robot frame, from the robot frame to the steering frame, and then from the steering frame to the wheel frame. And that's what you see here is just this sum. And uh, so these R's are displacement vectors, and the notation is just from the inertial frame to the wheel frame, and so on. So if you take this vector equation, and you just take the time derivative in the inertial frame, and assume that a couple of these vectors are not changing. So this displacement from the robot frame to the steering frame is not changing. This displacement from the steering frame to the wheel frame is not changing. Uh, if you just take that time derivative and then go through the sort of standard uh, methods of vector calculus, you end up with this on the bottom, which we call the wheel equation. And this has a, a really nice form that I just like to go through. So it's the sum of a, a bunch of individual terms, and the terms are actually quite intuitive when you look at them. So the first is the robot velocity. So of course, some part of the wheel's motion within the inertial frame is explained by the uh, velocity of the robot. Oh yeah, so in this, uh, the v's are velocities and the omegas are angular velocities. The r's again are just displacement vectors. Um, the next term here is the robot's angular velocity. So that makes sense too, that some uh, portion of the speed of the wheel or the velocity of the wheel is explained by the robot's angular velocity. And that's involved in two terms. The first is a cross product with the steering offset, um, which makes sense. The second term is a cross product between the robot angular velocity and the wheel offset, which also makes sense. So there are sort of these lever arms and the further away the wheel is, from the robot center, um, the faster it's going to move. Finally, we have the steering rate cross product with the wheel offset, which also makes sense. So the rate of steering around here explains some of the motion of the wheel. So what I want to do now is take this um, general wheel equation and give a, a short worked example for a standard wheel. And so I'll just take a moment to define some notation. So we'll put the steering frame 
uh, in this case, at the wheel center and the sort of distance uh, from the robot coordinate frame. So this big coordinate frame is now the, uh, uh, the robot coordinate frame. The inertial frame will be somewhere else. L is the distance from the robot coordinate frame to the wheel center. And alpha is the, is the, um, the angle of the steering coordinate frame uh, from the, from the um, uh, robot coordinate frame. We'll then put the wheel coordinate frame, and this will be coincident with the steering coordinate frame, so they share the same origin, and offset by an angle beta. So beta, in this case, is the steering angle. And what happens if you set the problem up like this, you see that the wheel offset is actually zero. And so these two terms are just going to disappear. And what you get is a sort of reduced equation for the, for the wheel. And it's basically, it just involves the robot velocity, the robot's angular velocity, and the steering offset. Now let's review the differential constraints for a standard wheel. So we know that uh, in this case, motion in the y direction is explained by the rolling of the wheel. So that is if the wheel's radius is r and the turning speed is phi dot, then we know that y dot is equal to r phi dot. We have the no sliding constraints, so we know that the wheel cannot side slip. And we make the planar assumption, so we say that velocity in the z direction is also zero because the robot is moving on a, on a horizontal plane. Finally, it has unconstrained rotation about the contact point. Uh, I'll just introduce some other notations. So here, the state of the robot. So this is the pose of the robot in the inertial frame. So if I put a robot here with respect to the inertial frame, I have this x, y, and theta. And so we just stack those up. Xi with respect to the inertial frame is just stacked x, y, theta. Of course, then the derivative of that, uh, xi dot, is just x dot, y dot, and theta dot. We also define this sort of fundamental rotation matrix uh, around the z-axis, and so that's just the standard equation for uh, rotation. And uh, I, at one point, used this rule for combining rotation matrices, so Ra and Rb, because they're around the same axis, is just Ra plus B. And finally, I use this, so the xi dot R, so the velocity, state velocity in the robot frame, is just uh, xi dot I times um, r theta. So we've uh, taken the general wheel equation, we've reduced it for the standard wheel because the wheel frame and the steering frame are coincident. And the next step is really to give numbers to these things. So what we do is we take this vector equation and we express it in the wheel frame. So we have on the left the velocity uh, of the wheel with respect to the inertial frame expressed in the wheel frame, and then on the right those other components. And the really great thing when we do this is the left-hand side of this equation is known from the constraints on the previous slide. So we know that um, the wheel cannot side slip, so x dot is zero. We know that motion in the direction of the y-axis is explained by rolling of the wheel, phi dot r, and we know that the um, there's no velocity in the z direction because of the planar assumption. So all that's left to do, because we know the left-hand side, is to expand terms on the right-hand side. So the first term here, um, the velocity of the robot uh, as seen from the inertial frame expressed in the wheel frame is just this, the velocity of the robot as seen from the inertial frame expressed in the inertial frame, and then rotated all the way to the wheel frame. And so we can uh, expand these rotations here. I've just combined this alpha plus beta uh, to get those in a nice form. And uh, yeah, that's the equation for the first term. For the second term, this uh, omega cross r here, um, we know that omega of the robot, so the angular velocity of the robot um, as seen from the inertial frame, is just angular velocity around the z-axis. And so when we use the matrix form of the cross product, you get this really simple skew-symmetric matrix here where the angular velocity just appears in these two components. And then this vector uh, is really just derived from trigonometry, from looking at this um, diagram and coming up with the, um, 
with the uh, steering frame as seen from the robot frame and expressed in the wheel frame. So that's just that. So if you do that multiplication, you kind of get these two simple terms. And all that's left to do is actually pull out the component parts of these terms. And what you get when you do that is you end up with this, the rolling constraint, and the no sliding constraint. And those are the basic equations for a standard wheel. Now, what, what we like to do for further analysis, and you'll see in a further segment, is we like to call these, uh, these, uh, these terms that you saw here, we like to call component parts of them by a name so we can just call them. So this, uh, the rolling constraint matrix we call J1, and we make it a function of beta so that if you have steerable wheels, it can be uh, steerable and we call the constraint matrix C1. And you'll see in a coming slide set that we will uh, look at the properties of these matrices to, um, to uh, uh, characterize the types of motions that a specific mobile robot platform is capable of. Okay, thank you for your attention.